Cyberpunk 2077 mods are finally here. In this video, what I want to do is highlight to you some of the best mods currently available for this game, roughly going over about the top 10 options you'll have right now, covering a wide range of things. Looking at some of the mods that will just give you a wide variety of additional functionality around cheating or changing the game settings in Cyberpunk, some of these themed around quality of life, making the game a bit more enjoyable for most of us, or alternatively, flat out hacks giving us every item in the game or even just making us a god in the world, giving you the option almost for a new game plus in a way, and we even got some visual or lewd mods mixed in depending on what exactly your tastes are. If you guys enjoy the content, you can get subscribed, and of course, an important notice, all of these mods, at least for right now, are PC only. We haven't heard much about the modding scene of Cyberpunk after release. The only mention we got was actually in a patch note. When the Hotfix 1.05 went out, they actually removed the debug console from the game, blocking the use of console commands which was kind of a hit to the modding community since several mods enabled that and were giving you lists of items to spawn in. And they mentioned, this doesn't mean we don't want to support the modding community. Stay tuned for more info on that. That was a couple of weeks ago with all the problems the game is having as far as bugginess in particular on consoles. I would be shocked if we hear anything soon. So at least for right now, these are PC exclusives and I will have links to everything down below if you're interested. So the first mod I want to take a look at is the better controls menu. So I find the fact that this actually is a mod kind of strange in that what this is going to do is enable several of the keybind options that are disabled by default but are enabled by changing some INI &I settings. So basically, if you wanted to change the main interact key, which typically is F, to let's say E, like it is in many, many other games, this enables you to do that. It's one of those things that's in the files, it seems like, disabled by default, but this mod enables it so you can actually customize them. So right off the bat, it makes nearly every key in the game now bindable to something, so you can actually edit and change what certain things do. But even further, some additional functionality, like a key for enabling slow walking. So if you don't want to always have that kind of natural jog you do in the game, it'll just walk slowly. And even what is by far the most helpful choice out of all of these is a dedicated dodge key. By default on PC, you typically have to double tap the W, A, S, or D keys to dodge in a certain direction. But this mod, you could bind it to, let's say, the left control key. So anytime you hit left control and then W, A, S, or D, you will dodge that way. It makes using dodges and actually comboing with dodges a lot more intuitive and just a lot more enjoyable. And frankly, for that functionality alone, I would definitely recommend downloading this one. And then of course, other things like rebinding quick save, or if you tend to play with some odd keybinds in general. But then if just outright cheating is your goal, one of the best, most player approachable options is going to be the Cyberpunk 2077 Trainer. So this is going to be using a program called Wiimod, and it's widely used for trainers for various games. This particular trainer is made by Fling, and basically, after installing this program, you have to tell it where Cyberpunk is located, and then from there, it's a very nice and user-friendly way to just have a bunch of cheat codes in the game. This is doable by many other things, whether it be console commands, which we'll touch on in a moment, or even just using something like Cheat Engine. The appeal of this trainer is it has all of the fundamental options you'd want and a nice UI to make them a lot more digestible by the wider community. You can do all kinds of stuff with this, including just a full-on cheat mode, make it so you have unlimited grenades, unlimited HP, so you no longer have to reload, so one shot kills all enemies. Enemies. Not necessarily fun to do across an entire playthrough, but if you just want to mess around a bit in Cyberpunk, this is a good one to turn on and just go to town, see just how much havoc you can cause. We could actually do some pretty crazy things with this, like actually changing the game speed overall. So if you want the speed to be three times faster, so everything is completely wild, or alternatively, if you want things to all be in slow motion. But of course, there are also some more practical or usable things across a playthrough, or even if you want something like a new game plus on a new character, if you don't want to go through just the same amount of grind you were doing previously. You could change how much money is in your character overall, your level of either just your character or street cred, and even the number of perks or attribute points you currently have on that character. There are a ton of tools in this one. I'm just going over some of the most obvious ones. And again, it's really easy to just download and use out of the box. There are other programs that offer similar feature sets or even more feature sets, but this one is definitely the simplest to use. But then we get into the category of mods that just should have been a feature to begin with, and that is the user-friendly hairstyle changer. This is a really simple mod and actually a third-party program you launch alongside Cyberpunk 2077 that basically allows you to change the hairstyle on your character. It's pretty simple to use. You have to identify which hairstyle you are using right now. So just load the game, look at your hair, and then actually you could choose which hairstyle you want to change to. There are these nice images attached to the mod page, which I will have linked down below so you can quickly and easily do this. Unfortunately, it's one of the more bare bones options in that it doesn't allow you 
to change other things like the hair color, your beard, or your overall character's appearance. There were some mods that started to offer this functionality, but as we oftentimes see with mods, they were broken by updates. And at least in my searching, I couldn't find ones that were more feature rich that currently worked on the latest build. So right for right now, if you're unhappy with your character's hair choice, this is one of the best options you have to actually get that to a different look. But then we have what is going to be the biggest mod in this video and one of those cornerstone or definitive mods that nearly all of you will probably want to download if you're looking to get into modding. What this is is Cyber Engine Tweaks and there's a ton of people behind it and has a ton of functionality for the game. Straight off the bat, as you download and install this one, there will be a config file attached that allows you to adjust several things with Cyberpunk. You can make the game actually kind of worse, like disabling things you typically couldn't turn off completely, like a crowd or TAA. This will make the game look worse and actually a mice machine run worse, but if you are on a lower end or literally at the bare bones of hardware struggling to run the game, there's several settings in here that could be pretty handy. There's a nice wiki page to accompany this one that do explain what each do and what you could turn on or off. There's also things like unlocking the CPU or GPU performance. It seems like these might be somewhat outdated and not necessary anymore. In my experience, I actually got one or two additional FPS, and by unlocking both of these, my CPU performance did increase, my GPU still stayed at just 17 or so percent, which is weird. Sometimes I dip under 60 FPS, but my GPU usage does not go above 17 percent usage either way. There's some quality of life features in this one, like making it so there are no longer startup movies when you load the game. They actually allow for virtual inputs, so if you are disabled, you're using some kind of accessibility software, this will be very handy, or even just a Steam controller. And one of the biggest things, it actually adds in the console. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, Cyberpunk 2077 used to have its kind of built-in debug console that had to be enabled by a mod, or technically an INI setting, but since that was removed, modders actually made their own console. So functionally, it's a bit different, this one's slightly more complicated, but at the end of the day, all of the functions are still there. And like most games, by hitting the tilde key, you can open up the console and you have a ton of functionality with this one. So much, I can't nearly go over all of it in this video. So one of the first and easy things, you could spawn weapons, give perk points, give you skill books so you could raise your skills to their max level. Some of these are actually quest weapons that you otherwise couldn't get going a complete cheat method. One nice one is just with one console command, you can unlock every single vehicle in the game and just have the ability to call whatever you want at will and really just overall add any item to your inventory in the game. If you want more money, if you want certain crafting materials, and even a ton of unique or custom things like making it so some weapons lock onto people's heads, which can be very handy at making that one weapon extremely overpowered. So the thing with the console is there are a ton of resources out there kind of separated as individual mods that will give you a ton of stuff you could do with the console. The console basically has near limitless possibilities, but actually finding a nice list of what it can do can be difficult. So a few links down below to some of the console commands you can use or rely on to actually get this working and start cheating or using commands in your game. One of the other big functionalities is if let's say one of your quests got stuck or you want to skip progress or you hit a progress block, you can use the console to get around that. One of the very useful things you can do with the console is actually spawn in all of the iconic weapons that you display in your apartment. There's a mod which is really just a text file that I have linked down below that has a list of all of these commands to put in. If you're not familiar with all the weapons on your wall in the apartment, you basically need to leave the weapon in your apartment stash. So if you, of course, want to use that cool weapon, you can't, unless there's by some method getting two of them, like a crafting recipe, or there are just two in the world. So that's pretty handy. Or even this Sbox mod, which basically installs a bunch of script to be used with this console. And then upon running the script, it'll deposit a ton of some item in your inventory. So it can give you basically all of the weapons in the game, basically all the apparel items in the game for whichever apparel category you're looking for. And this extends to basically every category category of item. It's still a work in progress, so it might not always be the top tier items, but it's pretty handy for just messing around or perhaps even just exploring everything in Cyberpunk. It's a really handy one. I'm really just scratching the surface as to what is possible here. I'll have some links to resources down below if you want to get a bit deeper or just want to explore it yourself. But another mod that is immensely valuable, should have just been a feature from day one, is instant crafting. It's really simple. What it's going to do is make it so now when you go to craft an item, instead of having it take 0.8 seconds, it'll be basically instant. And what this means is you could just spam click the mouse button or the A button if you are using a controller with your PC to craft things very quickly. In particular, if you're upgrading components, it could be endless just crafting things like this. But with this mod, it makes what used to take several minutes take typically under a minute or even sometimes even faster. If you're going to 
big into crafting on PC, I would say this is a must download. Technically, it's just one line in an i9 file, so it's easy to change on your own if this mod ends up getting outdated at some point, but at least for now, it's super handy and works well right out of the box. But then we have some mods around vehicle handling. For whatever reason, vehicle handling in Cyberpunk has always been really weird. Even from some of those summer previews, it was one of the major things to get criticized about the game. The most popular option out there right now is better vehicle handling. It has a few different files you could download, but in general, it'll make it so the cars slide around less. In particular, on bikes, the handbrake feels a bit better if you're using the version that actually improves that, so you could do some of those handbrake turns a lot more easily. And really, it's one of those things that's super subjective. You might love this one, you might not like this one, and also it doesn't really show up all that well on video because you can't see what controls I'm inputting or have that exact feel. But I actually think, despite this being the most popular, it's not the best option. The best option, at least in my eyes, is drive it like you stole it. To me, I think this is just the best choice if you're using a keyboard and mouse specifically with Cyberpunk. In some ways, almost feels most similar to GTA 5 vehicle handling out of all of the mods I've tested thus far. This too will just in general make it so the cars feel less like they're on ice. In particular with this one, I think across the board, using the e-brake on vehicles again with motorcycles makes it feel a lot nicer. You could spin a lot quicker, you could actually take turns a bit sharper on motorcycles. And also, I think this mod has the nice effect at making it sometimes when you hit or just run into other vehicles, it feels a bit more weighty, like that actually did impact your vehicle, and it'll make traffic overall go a bit quicker. Now, unfortunately, you can't change things completely with the physics engine. If you run into a wall, you'll still kind of laughably bounce off, but at least for the time being, Drive It Like You Stole It is definitely my favorite vehicle mod, and I think somewhat getting overlooked, so I definitely recommend giving it a try. But then we have one of the lewd mods out there right now. So this is a weird one, because I can't really show it in the video, because I want to stay monetized, but functionally, what this will do is remove underwear from Cyberpunk 2077, assuming you actually have the adult settings turned on. Basically, by default in the game, if you're in the game world, even if you do have the nudity setting turned on, the vast majority of the time, you will still see your character with underwear on, whether you're a male or a female. This is going to remove that, so if you look in a mirror now, your character will no longer be wearing underwear, or of course, if you look down, and all those other settings where this may come into play. Unfortunately, the actual specifics going on down there aren't necessarily rendered. The mod author is working on that one, but if you're looking for a bit more immersion or just want to see your character without pants more often, you actually do have to remove all of the clothes off of your character for this to work. This is one of the best choices you have right now, and the start of what is likely to end up being a very active and wide variety of lewd mods that do eventually come to this game. Last but not least, we do have a visual mod that with Cyberpunk Autonomous Reshade offering true HDR, at least from a software perspective. Basically, this is a reshade for the game, one of the most popular choices right now. Reshades, as always, are going to be extremely subjective. It more or less is a program you install atop the game, almost giving the game a filter. With this particular one, it tends to make some of those colors, in particular at night, just pop a bit more. I would say it probably makes the game a bit darker, but some of those blues, greens, and reds as you see on neon signs or even on other vehicles do tend to pop a bit more. It's really one of those things that's kind of hard to verbally explain in a video, but hopefully the footage is showing you a good representation of what this does. For some of you, you might love this mod. For some of you, you're like, nope, I think the regular game looks much better. But overall, for me at least, it didn't have a huge performance hit, and it definitely made the game look way better in certain instances. So overall, those are some mods you could download right now for Cyberpunk 2077 that will hopefully improve your game. There's a lot of options right now, but hopefully a lot more to come in the future. Typically, modding scenes with games like Cyberpunk take off a couple of months after release, as people start to beat the game and start doing some more insane or crazy things. The reason for this is, with a game like Cyberpunk, there's just a ton to figure out. Mods, to a certain degree, are possible, but you have to understand what's under the hood first to actually implement some of those things. So it might be a couple of months before we get some of the larger ones, but I think this is a good initial offering, providing a good balance between quality of life, utility, and even some of the more funky stuff that you may be into. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this one informative, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.